Welcome to Sealing God's People with your host, Dennis Beard. And God's doing a new thing. Now, it's been five years. On the 19th of January, 2019, we had a visitation from our Lord Jesus Christ. And it lasted about two hours. We started doing podcasts on Sealing God's People based upon that visitation. We've had a tremendous response in Africa, India, Pakistan, somewhat New Zealand, and various places around the globe. We found that most of the downloads have been in the United States, albeit we haven't had that much response there from you. So we want to talk about what is happening in the present truth of the Word of God. And Psalm 126, God said he would do a new thing, the great thing. It's the new wine. It is the sealing of the saints of God, the servants of God, in their forehead. Now, we find in a predicate, a preface before Ezekiel's temple, that the glory of God, because the ministers, the priests, are so carnally minded and see what they do in the, their imagination, the imagery in their minds, that God moves away from the priesthood. Because he does this, we find the glory of the Lord that goes over the threshold of the house. Now, before the millennial, and that's very important, before the millennial, the glory of God departs off the threshold and goes over the cherubim. Now, we're going to be focusing on that cherubim that we see in Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10 by what Ezekiel saw by the river Kibar in Babylon. Ezekiel's in Babylon. Jeremiah is in Israel. And, we, of course, Daniel is there in Israel as well during the captivity. Isaiah is prophesying a hundred years before this. But we find that each one talks about apocalyptic events. What is going to happen before the millennial reign of Jesus Christ? In that millennium, Psalm 132, 11, the Lord has sworn in truth unto David and will not turn from it, that of the fruit of thy body, David... Well, I, that is God, set upon thy throne. He will reign and rule 1,000 years in the millennial and build the temple himself for its Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. In Micah 4, there will be gods, judges, and the righteous nations will walk in the name of their gods, little g-o-d-s, Judges, and we, that is the king priesthood, that reigning and ruling with Christ, will walk in the name of the Lord our God. Now, before that, there are some events that must happen that are essential. The glory of God going from off the threshold of the house and then abiding over the cherubim. We find in Ezekiel 1 that when Ezekiel, in the 30th year, son of Buzi, had visions of God, and when he saw that heavens opened, just as Jesus did after his baptism of John and Jordan, the heavens were opened unto him. That started Jesus' three and a half year, 42 months, a time, times, dividing of a time, ministry, three and a half years. He was cut off in the midst of the week, but not for himself. And he caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. There we have another three and one half years, 42 months, 1,203 score days of the Jesus ministry that's ahead of us. For this gospel of the kingdom must be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end will come. Many ministers there, after hearing our visitation on the 19th of January, 2019, have joined in that great move of God that going from the old store, 
from the old wine into that of the new wine, for the new wine must be put into new vessels, new wine skins. Otherwise, they will not be preserved. This is where we are now. And it is very important that we see in Revelation 11, 1, there was read like unto a rod given unto me, John said, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, measure it not for it's given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall be trodden underfoot 42 months. Time, times and a half, three and a half years. Yet during this time, God will give power unto his two witnesses. The two witnesses there is the body of Christ and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Jesus. You'll see that in John 8, 13 through 27. When we find that Jesus, when they came to him, the Pharisees stated, Jesus, you bear record of yourself. Your record is not true. Jesus said, though I bear record of myself, my record is true because I'm not alone. I am my father that sent me. Then he goes on and explains what the witnesses are when there's only but one man there, Jesus, in the fullness of the Godhead. He is God manifest in the flesh, Elohim, God with us. And he said, it's written in your law, the testimony of two men is true. I am one that beareth witness of myself. Notice he went from record to witness. Here's one witness. I bear witness of myself. We're in Christ's stead. We are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. We are ambassadors, ambassadors for Christ. We are in his stead now. That is, those that have the Holy Ghost, the servants of God, have the Holy Ghost and are witnesses unto Jesus to this world. And Jesus said, it's written in your law, the testimony of two men is true. There's a testimony of Jesus. There's your Revelation 19.10. And John saw it. He was, and he was about to worship the man. And he said, see, thou doest it not. I am of thy fellow servants and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Well, Jesus there is given us the two witnesses in John 8, 13 through 27. He said, it's written in your law, talking to the Pharisees, the testimony of two men is true. I'm one that beareth witness of myself, that is Jesus in the days of his flesh, now which that is the church as ambassadors for Christ, the Christ generation, that seed that shall be counted for the generation, and you that are in the word of God know what I'm talking about, the true one God believers. And then my father that sent me, he beareth witness of me. There's your two witnesses. Then the Pharisees said, where is your father? They did not understand that Jesus is the father manifest in the flesh. And Jesus went on. There's the two witnesses. Now, what does that mean to us in the last day work of the ministry? We're all called for it. The body of Christ. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. That ministry is a three and a half year 42 month time, times a half, ministry of Jesus Christ. We find that in Revelation 10, Revelation 11, and Revelation 12. The man shall come to God and to his throne is not the nation of Israel. It's the remnant of her seed that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus for three and a half years, 42 months, 1,203 score days in the Jesus ministry, fulfilling his week as in Daniel 9, 27. That is what God is doing. Now it's a new thing. It's new wine. And the cherubim there that we see in Revelation 4 and Revelation 5 are the four beasts before the throne of God, along with the four and 20 elders with the four and 20 seats. There's a priesthood, but the four and the four beasts before the throne of God are called the four beasts. Those are the zoe, the living creatures. The living creatures we saw by the river Kibar are the cherubim. We see that in Ezekiel 10. And this is according to the vision that Ezekiel saw by the river Kibar in Babylonian captivity. Then he was translated uh, there in a vision 
to Israel, Jerusalem, when he come to destroy Jerusalem, what he saw in the destruction of the city. We see in Revelation 11, 1, the city trodden underfoot for 42 months, time, times a half, three and a half years. Well, during that time, when evil comes in like a flood, the earth will swallow up the flood and help the woman. Who are those? That's the man shall come to God into his throne in Revelation 12, the church that has birthed the last day, last day, Jesus' ministry. Those that are the remnant of her seed, Revelation 12, that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus, as Jesus stated in John 8, 13 through 27, he said, it's written your law, the testimony of two men is true. I'm one that beareth witness of myself. There's the first witness. That's the body of Christ. And my father that sent me, he beareth witness of me. There are your two witnesses. Now, when we focus on the cherubim, we will be bringing this great truth to you that God visited me there on the 19th of January, 2019, five years ago. We immediately started doing podcasts on sealing God's people. Many of you are following it, but how many are making a move, preparing themselves through the word of God for the sealing of the saints of God in their foreheads? The ones that do will be the ones that will be used for the work of the ministry that will literally proclaim this everlasting gospel to all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. He that overcometh in the end, the same shall be saved. The old store, that is the Pentecostal movement, the old wine. We've been in that for over two days or 2,000 years. We're in the third day now, as Hosea 6 says, Come and let us return to the Lord, for he hath torn, he will heal us. He has spent and he will bind us up. When? When the, the uh, glory of God left the threshold of the house and then abode over the cherubim. Who are these cherubim? Well, they are the Zoe, the living creatures, the four beasts before the throne of God in Revelation 4 and Revelation 5. And who will be able to stand? Those that are sealed in Revelation 7. God is doing that now. The angels are holding back the four winds before they hurt the earth, the trees, the land, and the seas. They're holding it back until God has sealed his servants, the body of Christ, in their foreheads, in the new thing that God is doing. This is not Pentecostal, my friend. That's the old store. That's the old wine. It's still truth, yes. But we are to leave. Therefore, the first principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, Hebrews 6 not laying again the foundation of faith toward God and repentance from dead works, the doctrine of baptism and of laying on the hands and of resurrection and the eternal judgment. This will we do if God permit. Let us go on unto perfection. There, God gave that fivefold ministry for the perfecting of the saints. For who he did foreknow, them he also, what? He perfected. He, they are the who say we are in the foreknowledge of God, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified by the Holy Ghost and belief of the truth. Sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So whom he did foreknow, them he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, and those that he predestinated, them that he called. Them that he called, them he justified, them that he justified, them he also glorified, to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That's what's happening now. A church coming into the fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus unto a perfect man. So what's happening now? God is sealing his people. You that are hearing this and God's dealing with you and you feel a witness in the Holy Ghost bearing witness with your spirit, you need to contact us. You want us to come to your church? We'll be glad to do it. We have a ministry bus. We have 20 ministers and families here that are in this ministry, we're mobile, bringing it to you. You in Africa, we have uh, so many over 
uh, hundreds of requests to come and bring this message to you. There again, we will as the Lord leads. Right now, please keep tuning into the podcast. What's happening? The glory of God hath departed off the threshold of the house and is abiding now over the cherubim. Who are the cherubim? Well, they have the face of Jesus, the four faces. They have the appearance of a man, Ezekiel 1, 5. Who is that? They're, they go forth as the appearance of lightning. And they have their four faces, the face of a, the face of a lion, the face of an ox, a face of a man, a face of an eagle. Lion, man, ox, and eagle. These are the four zoe, the living creatures that Ezekiel saw by the river Kibar. They are the cherubim, which are not born again believers only, or have grown to children, knowing that he's the father. You'll see that in 1 John 2, 12 through 14. Those are the growth states going from glory to glory. Well, they start out as newborn believers, born of the water and the spirit, Acts 2, 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, born of the water. And you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost, born of the Spirit, promising to you and to your children, many that are far off, even to as many as the Lord our God shall call. This is the first principle of the doctrine of Christ. It's not the fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus. Then we go to little children. Now, when newborn babes desire, then sincere milk of the word, they may grow thereby, but then they grow to the little children. And John says in his epistle, 1 John 2, 12 through 14, I write to you little children because you have known the Father and your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. They're born again, but now they know that Jesus in the days of his flesh was the Father revealed. They know that Jesus is the Father. He is that spirit. Except you believe that I am he, the Father of glory, Jesus stated, you shall die in your sins, John 8, 24. Well, the children know that. But you don't stop as being children. That's where we have been for over 2,000 years in the Pentecostal move in the former reign of the Holy Ghost. But now we're going into a new dimension. Many say, well, I know there's a new dimension. I don't know what it is. It's a new thing that God's doing, but I'm not sure. Well, ask you of the Lord reign in the time of the latter reign, so the Lord will make bright clouds and four showers everyone grass in the field. Zechariah 10, 1. He's measuring the temple now, Zechariah 2. Revelation 11, 1. He's doing it now. And there's an interim. There is a time that God is now in a window of opportunity, those that are seeking his face, to seal them in their foreheads because they will be the only ones that will be able to stand in Revelation 7. There we find that the cherubim, from the glory of God coming off the threshold of the house, they're abiding over the cherubim, the zoe, the living creatures, the Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, four beasts before the throne of God. These will be the ones that the beasts say, or the living creatures say, come and see, and they're preaching the everlasting gospel. In Revelation 6, to all the world for a witness and all nations. Right now, the glory of God is over those cherubim. They are the fathers. And what are the fathers? Small f. The fathers there are the ones that are full grown in the Lord Jesus Christ. You start as a newborn baby. 1 John 2, 12 through 14. Please read it. But then, as a newborn babes desire then sincere milk of the word, they may grow thereby. Then they go to little children. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake, and you've known the Father. The Father of glory is Jesus Christ, the Father. Now you have that revelation. That's wonderful. Don't stop there. Now you're pressing toward the mark for the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus for the work of the ministry. What is that? Then I write unto you, young men, because the word of God is strong in you and you've overcome the wicked one. That's Revelation, the second and the third chapter, the overcomers. But then in Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, you have the final fathers of glory. I write to you, fathers, that's a full-grown statue of Jesus, fully grown in the inner man. 
around to you fathers because you have known him that's from the beginning. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that's from the beginning. John in his epistle mentions that twice. Why? Because they are the cherubim. They are the two sons of old in Zechariah 4. Notice that in Zechariah 3, after the temple is measured in Zechariah 2, we have Joshua, Yeshua, coming before the Lord. Satan comes there against him. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. And notice, is this not a brand plucked out of the fire? That's where we are now. Don't be deceived. God has visited us where we are doing uh, the will of God and bringing it to you. But who will have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches? Well, what is it? God is raising up his body now for the work of the ministry, for this everlasting gospel, this gospel of the kingdom, to be preached in all the world for a witness in all nations. And then, neighbor, the end will come. God said it, that settled it. Then uh, that, that is determined will be done. It's happening now. God is sealing his people now for those that have an ear to hear. That's what he stated there in Transamerica, Kenya, after preaching there in Africa at a Maasai tribal church. There about two o'clock after preaching a morning service. We came out about two, and it lasted two hours as a visitation from the Lord Jesus Christ. Basically, he said, the bottom line, seal my people by my word. Even as I send my angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, so send I you. It was so strong, we could not, the ministers with me could not walk. This lasted for over two hours. And we immediately started a podcast on sealing God's people. Now that may seem that we're out in some new thing and God doesn't do a new thing. Oh, yes, he does. And he's doing a new thing, a great thing. God will do the great thing in these last days. It's the new wine that must be put in the new wine skins. God's doing it now. Seek the Lord. If God is dealing with you and giving you a literal agreement in your spirit, bearing witness with your spirit, then please contact us. We can work together. This is not a denominational or interdenominational. This is the body of Christ. God's not working uh, through denominations. He's working through the body of Christ. Those that will, without fear of favor, bring the unadulterated word of God to the people without fear or favor the true word of God. That's what he's doing now. Now, we have brought this and we have been reserved in bringing it, letting the people, as you hear it, discern as the mouth trieth of me, so the ear trieth the word. But now we're into it. We're deep into it. That the Lord now is moving there very, very explicitly to Warn my people, seal my people by my word, not for any of our righteousness or holiness, but for his name's sake, he's doing it. These cherubim of glory now have the glory of God over them. It's a new thing. It's the great thing. It's the new wine that he's putting in the new wine skins now. He's sealing the service of God in their forehead that will be used as the living creatures bring this eternal gospel to all the world for a witness to all nations. When who that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Whenever that cherubim, the glory of God's over them, and the cherubim, two wings, they cover their face, two wings, they cover the feet, two wings, they did fly in the seraph, the burning, uh, the burning uh, flame, the burning fire, fiery ones. That's the body of Christ. And those right now that are doing that, knowing they're to call for this great work in the last days that will bring this last day Elijah ministry. Somebody said, well, I know there's Elijah ministry. I don't know what it means. Well, there's your cherubim. There's your fathers. And he said, I write unto you fathers in 1 
that first John 2, 12 through 14, I write unto you fathers because you've known him this from the beginning. You've eyes before and behind, the eyes of revelation. And I have written unto you fathers because you've known him this from the beginning. John says it two times. Who's him from the beginning? Who is knowing him this from the beginning? Well, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. God's doing it now. Neighbor's doing it now. Now, we have to move. Not set back in a corner, but we have to literally stand as a witness for the Lord God. Woe be unto the man that holdeth back his sword from the blood. It's warfare. Endure hardship as a good soldier. But stand there in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Move in faith proclaiming his eternal word. And that, that that is determined is being done now. He is sealing his servants now for those that have an ear to hear. So we'll be bringing this, focusing on the work of God, not some prophecy about who Donald Trump is and uh, what, what the nation and what this is. And we know there's a Gog and Magog war coming. We know that in Ezekiel 38. The Iranian proxies right now and what's happening with Israel and the Hamas and Hezbollah. We understand the Iranian proxies, what's going on in Iran, Iraq, all of these. Certainly playing, but God is focusing on his people now in sealing them in their foreheads, the servants of God. And that's where we're at. We need to hear from you. If God's bearing uh, the Spirit of God, bearing witness with your spirit, then here we are. There'll be contact on the, sc- on the screen there uh, that on this podcast and on the, uh, the videos that you can contact us, get in uh, uh, contact with us, and where we can work together. The time is, uh, the night is far spent, the day's at hand. God's doing it now. That's the message. Don't get sidetracked. Listen to the calling of God, and it is now, neighbor. It is now. The cherubim, there are the fathers. He's always had a witness. The gates of hell should not prevail against it. Here's a witness now. But we won't stay in Pentecost forever. We're going into tabernacle, the tabernaculus. We're not Pentecostals. We're tabernacle. God's doing it now. So, Email me, sailing God's people at dennisbeard.org. I'll get right back to you. You ministers that are doing that, especially in India and Africa, we'll get to you as soon as we can. America, we need to hear from you. You're downloading it. I know you're listening to the word. We need to hear. Contact us. So there we can work together. And no, no two can walk together except to be agreed. But the body of Christ has to come together for this great thing to come to pass in obedience to the word of God. Well, God bless you. We pray there that God will perfect that which is lacking in each one of us, that we all may be presented blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in both spirit, soul, and body. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold, the real Jesus. You that know that God has a great work in the last days in the work of the ministry. Know that there is a sealing of God's people before that great and terrible day of the Lord come and then Elijah ministry to the fullness of the measure of the statue of Jesus and this gospel being preached to all the world for witness unto all nations. You that feel the witness of the Holy Ghost bearing witness with your spirit, please contact me so we can work together. Until the next time, This is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold, the real Jesus.